Hi, welcome back. In the previous class, you studied regarding the Pascal's law and we were able to solve some of the application problem related to Pascal's law that is merely related to constant force transmission and variable force transmission. Now, let us move on to some unique type of problems which can be which can appear in the examination and which are regularly appearing and they are considered as frequently asked questions. So, these problems need to be studied and solved properly otherwise you cannot crack these problems. So, this is considered as special problems. So, let us take one such problem typical problem. The statement of the problem is like this in an hydraulic device shown in the figure calculate the output torque T 2 if the input torque T 1 is 10 Newton centimeter. Also given R radius R 1 2 centimeter radius R 2 4 centimeter. Right? So, this is the configuration given to you. Right? You can see that there is a two cylinders mounted on top. So, this is one cylinder and this is the another cylinder. Right? So, bottom cylinder and top cylinder. Horizontal bottom cylinder is horizontal cylinder top cylinder is vertical cylinder and the as usual there is a piston as attached to both cylinders and the rod at the tip of the rod there is a rack and pinion mechanism for both rack and pinion mechanisms are available right so this is horizontal cylinder this is vertical cylinder right so this rack and pinion arrangement is provided to convert rotary movement into linear movement or vice versa. That is here the linear movement of the piston is converted into the rotary movement of the rack. Same thing here the linear movement of the vertical piston is converted into the rotary movement of the rack. So, we need to analyze this problem and find out the torques that is the output torque. right? So, which is the input and which is the output? So, this is the small cylinder is the input cylinder that is the horizontal cylinder is the input cylinder, the bigger cylinder that is the vertical cylinder that is the output cylinder. So, after analyzing this diagram, please properly analyze this diagram right, and then proceed for solving. Let us solve this problem. First, let us write down uh, the given configuration that is the hydraulic cylinders hydraulic cylinders with rack and pinion mechanism pinion mechanism so this is the combination right so one uh, big vertical cylinder is there one thin horizontal cylinder is there right so, this is the configuration. So, this is the opening, right. So, you have one piston attached like this, okay, and the rod, the rod is there, this is the piston rod, and this is the rack. So, this is the rack and pinion mechanism right so you can redraw this simplified diagram right so label the parts so this is the input cylinder this is the output cylinder okay so these two are the pistons and this is the rack and pinion mechanism right so, we have forces acting tangential forces F 1, 
f 2 right. Also you have based on the reciprocation right, you have the moment right. So, you have the moment. So, this is called torque output torque input torque right. So, this is the displacement right. So, we can the displacement we call this as force into distance. So, this is the displacement displacement of the input cylinder displacement of the output cylinder right. So, d 1 and d 2 input output cylinders and uh, the uh, the rest of the thing is radius. So, the radius of this rack and pinion. So, this is r 1 and the radius of this is r 2 right. So, this is the schematic diagram of the hydraulic cylinder right. So, the given parameter here is the torque. So, torque the given parameter is the torque, the torque is 10 Newton per input torque is 10 Newton centimeter. So, you apply the torque 10 Newton centimeter along with that the other given information are R 1, R 1 is equal to 2 centimeter, R 2 radius is equal to 4 centimeter right. So, radius of the pinion. Uh, larger pinion being 4 and smaller pin pinion being 2 centimeters. Along with that the uh, displacements d 1, d 2. So, this is also given in the problem statement. So, d 1 is 8 centimeter and uh, d 2 is 24 centimeter. So, no need to worry about the centimeter because they all set tend to cancel. So, you need not convert that into meter and waste time. So, directly you can apply in the formula and you can cancel the like terms right. Now, according to the uh, Pascal's law, uh, we have that equilibrium the pressure generated by the uh, larger cylinder is equal to the smaller uh, cylinder. So, that you can apply. Also, you have one uh, formula ready recycling formula which says that the relation there is a definite relationship between area and distance. That is, uh, if you have continuity equation by continuity equation by having continuity equation, we can say that V 1 is equal to V 2. That is, the volume occupied by the small cylinder will be equal to volume occupied by the larger cylinder that is. So, assuming that there is equal volume uh, being pushed you can write V 1 is equal to V 2. So, V 1 in is equal to V 2 is equal to is nothing but A into D 1 A 1 D 1 is equal to A 2 into D 2 but d 1 and d 2 are what the displacement or the diameter right. So, we can come back and uh, we can modify this. So, we will get the answer as a 1 by a 2 is equal to d d 2 by d 1 ok. This is one continuity equation. So, based on this, this working principle is running right. So, now according to Pascal's law, according to Pascal's law, we can have P 1 is equal to P 2, which means F 1 by A 1 is equal to F 2 by A 2. So, which in turn means you have the relationship the dist force distance relationship F 1 by D 1 is equal to F 2 by D 2. So, this I have already explained in the previous class. So, you can directly apply from the first principle right. So, we can use 
the equation f1 by d1 is equal to f2 by d2 right so if you use that f1 by d1 f1 by d1 is equal to f2 by d2 also we know that torque is equal to force into radius torque is equal to force into radius or torque is equal to force multiplied by radius or force multiplied by diameter right so we can get force is equal to torque divided by radius force is equal to torque divided by radius right so we can substitute this uh, in this place so in terms of f1 and f2 right so it becomes t1 by so if I, I i will make this capital letter right nothing wrong with that i will you can make so t1 into r1 d1 is equal to t2 into r d2 because of this right so t1 is equal to t1 by r1 d1 is equal to t2 by r into d2 right now everything is uh, settled you can directly find out t2 right so what is the valuable now t1 is 10 newton per centimeter r1 is how much 2 centimeter d1 is 8 centimeter so t2 you have to find out r into d2 4 into 24 4 into 24 so if you simplify this you will get t2 as 60 newton centimeter so this is the output torque this is the input torque please compare this right so 10, 10 newton centimeter as the input and 60 newton centimeter as the output right so you can see how torque is proportional to power so more the torque more the power so 10 torque is given and you are extracting 60 torque 60 torque at the output side so this is the solution of this problem we move on to the next problem which is a very interesting problem because in this problem we are applying the concept of Bernoulli's equation. So, Bernoulli's equation is based on total energy available in the system which is nothing but summation of potential energy, kinetic energy and velocity energy. right? So, pressure energy, velocity energy and the uh, energy due to the datum or the reference. Now, this is the problem the sketch has been given to you right this is a tank filled with an hydraulic fluid and a siphon tube is a u shaped siphon tube is fitted one is inside the tank and another one is outside the tank it is uh, in fact draining of the fluid from this tank and uh, due to siphon action the fluid is coming out from this end so this point on the surface is taken as one and uh, the previous point at the outlet is taken at 2. So, at the surface it is 1 and at the outlet it is 2. The distance between 1 and 2 is the head and the reference reference line is this one right. So, 1 is at a distance of 4 meter and 2 is at a distance of 0.2 meter from this datum right. So, let us uh, read this problem. If the inside diameter of the siphon pipe is 30 millimeter, determine the velocity of the fluid and the flow rate in liters per minute through the siphon, apply energy equation and solve the problem. So, he has given you the hint. So, Bernoulli's equation is the energy equation. So, I will draw this diagram again and uh, explain and then, then I will so solve the problem. Now, let us start the problem. First, let us draw the diagram and uh, try to analyze the hydraulic 
system. So, a tank has been given like this. So, it is filled with hydraulic oil, a siphon tube is like this. So, it is continuously sucking out the oil right and there is a common reference here this is the datum right. So, this is the datum right and this is the tank this is the siphon tube right. So, for our convenience we represent this state as 1 and uh, the output point as 2 right. So, 1 is the surface of the water and 2 is the outlet or the end of the point. So, 1 is at a distance of 4 meter. So, we call it as z 1 4 meter that is the distance and 2 is at a distance of z 2 is at a distance of 0.2 meter from the baseline or the reference right. So, this is the problem given and uh, the other parameters given in this problem are z 1 is 4 meter, z 2 is 0.2 meters and uh, head loss due to friction that is also given head loss due to friction is 0.5 meter. So, that is also given h loss due to friction is 0.5 meter. So, these are all the given parameters. So, this is given, this is given and this is given. So, the diameter of the pipe, the diameter of the pipe is 30 millimeter. So, this pipe the siphon pipe diameter is 30 millimeter. So, diameter of the pipe is 30 millimeter. So, what we have to do is we have to find out the velocity of the fluid. So, if I call this as the velocity, we have to find out the velocity of the fluid. So, this is the fluid is coming out like this, right. So, it is coming out, we have to find out the velocity of the flow, right. So, all these equations are given, right, z 1 is 4 meter. So, I will just label here, z 1 is 4 meter, z 2 is 0.2 meter, h l is head loss due to friction is 0.5 meter, right, diameter of the siphon tube is 30 millimeter right. So, we have to find out the what velocity coming out exit velocity we have to find out right. So, exit velocity we have to find out. Now, he says apply energy equation. So, we if we apply energy equation Bernoulli's equation is the energy equation which is applicable to uh, this hydraulic fluid right. So, can we apply Bernoulli's equation now? So, according to or apply Bernoulli's equation right. So, Bernoulli's equation says that z 1 plus P 1 by omega z 1 plus P 1 by omega plus V 1 square by 2 G P 1 square by 2 V 1 square by 2 G plus head of motor minus head of pump head of sorry head of pump minus head of motor and also friction loss is equal to 
z2 plus p2 square by gamma plus v2 square by 2g. So, this is the Bernoulli's equation, comprehensive Bernoulli's equation applied to the hydraulic system. Right. You may be wondering what is this head loss? So, these are all head losses we have to consider. Right. So, pump is there, so motor is there and head loss due to friction is there. Right. So, we have to consider all these things we have to modify. Now, we will simplify this equation based on certain assumption. The first assumption is right P 1 is equal to P 2. Since it is at atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure P 1 is equal to P 2. So, if P 1 is equal to P 2 automatically this term and this term gets cancelled. P 1 by omega, P 1 by 2 omega. So, they get omega is the specific gravity, right. So, it tends cancel. Also, we have V 1 is equal to 0 because the initial velocity for initial velocity for large tank is neglected. Hence, V 1 is equal to 0. So, this is also 0. So, V 1 square becomes 0. Right. So, in this system, it is a natural circulation system. So, no question of pump and motor. So, H p is equal to H m is equal to 0. No pump, no motor. So, natural circulation. Natural circulation. So, no pump, no motor. So, this is also 0. So, H p is 0, H m is 0. So, we simplify the equation. So, other than this, if we uh, simplify this automatically, we get equation 1, if I name. So, equation 1 reduces to z 1 minus h l is equal to z 2 plus v 2 square by 2 g. Right. So, I will uh, rearrange the terms. So, I will send this here and I will send this here z 1 minus z 2 is equal to v 2 square by 2 g plus h l. Right. So, z 1 minus z 2 is nothing but the difference z 1 minus z 2 is the difference in heights right the difference in the height. So, that this is the uh, difference right. So, v 2 square plus h l right. So, what we can do is we can substitute the variables and find out the solution. So, uh, we can z 1 is 4 meter, z 2 is 0 0.2, v 2 we do not know we have to find out 2 into 9.81 plus h l is given is 0 0.5 meter. Right. So, 4 minus 0 0.2 is equal to v 2 square by 2 into 9.81 whole thing multiplied added by 0 0.5. So, if you simplify you get v 2 is equal to 8.05 meter per second. V 2 is equal to 8.05 meter per second. So, this is the exit velocity. So, we have found out the exit velocity V 2. Right? So, 
This is how we apply Bernoulli's equation. We simplify that equation based on certain assumptions and uh, we get the answer. Right? So, let us move on and from V2, let us find out the next important unknown. So, according to the equation, we know that continuity equation q is equal to a into v, q is equal to a into v, a v is the velocity and a is the area. right? So, if we want at the second state, so it is q2 is equal to a2 into v2. right? So, v2 has been found out. Right, so a two is nothing but pi by four into d square. So incidentally, d one and diameter is uniform. So d one and d two are same, is equal to d. Since the diameter is uniform, d one and d two is equal to d diameter of the siphon, right? Multiplied by v2 right so you can find out pi by 4 into 30 millimeter square so 30 millimeter square 30 millimeter means you can directly 10 to the power of minus 3 whole square pi by 4 into square into v2 v2 is 8.05 so this is in meters and this is also in meter per second right so this is 30 into 10 to the power of minus 3 meter so diameter is in meter so this is it becomes meter square right so it becomes meter cube per second now if you uh, simplify this the answer you get is 5.7 into 10 to the power of minus 3 meter per second this is the discharge in terms of meter cube per second, meter cube per second, 10 to the power of minus 3 meter cube per second, but we want this in terms of what? Liters per minute, liters per minute. So, this is okay, but uh, this quantity which we require says meters per, liters per minute, right? So, the liters per minute, to get liters per minute, we have to multiply this into again this value 5.7 into 10 to the power of minus 3, right? multiplied by 10 to the power of 3 because 1 liter is equal to 1000 cc right? and meter means multiplied by 60, so liters per minute. So, if you multiply it by this two you will get it in liters per minute, 60 minutes, right? Sec one uh, minute is equal to 60 seconds, right? So, multiply, you will get it in meter. So, 10 to the power of 3, you will get it in liters, right? So, you will get final answer 342 liters per minute. So, this is converted into, so, so Q2 is 342 liters per minute, right? So, the answer is 342 liter per minute. So, we have solved velocity we got as 8.05. So, from this equation, continuity equation, we got this one, right? 342 liter per minute, right? So, this problem is entirely based on few assumptions while applying Bernoulli's equation. The next problem. is a problem, we will read the statement of the problem. A displacement type cylinder has a rod diameter 65 millimeter and is powered by an pump with a displacement of 5 ml per double stroke. The maximum operating pressure is limited to 350 bar. Calculate number 1, the number of double pumping strokes needed 
to extend cylinder rod by 50 millimeter. Number two, the maximum load which could be raised using this system, right? So this is a problem related to the cylinder. So let us solve this. So as usual, let us visualize the pump, right? So he says that it's an hydraulic pump. It is having a cylinder and a piston, but it is manually operated. So something you can visualize like the uh, bore well. So bore well in any villages or in any town is also a manually operated pump. So I can what uh, visualize this. Right. So this is the pump. Right. So this is the crank. Right. And this is the piston. So lengthy piston. Right. So this is the piston. So this is the bore well. Right. So this is the manual pump which is visualizing. So, this is the water available, right? So, this is the rod, this is the piston. So, it is manually operated. So, it is manually operated, the piston is moving up and down and creating the suction pressure, right? So, what he gives here is some parameters like the diameter of the rod, diameter of the rod is equal to 60 millimeter, diameter of the rod is 65 millimeter, 65 millimeter. Next, the volume of displacement is equal to 5 milliliter which is equal to 5 centimeter cube 1 milli m 1 ml is equal to 1 cc 1 ml is equal to 1 cc so 5 ml is equal to 5 cc or 5 centimeter cube right so it is a double stroke the volume displaced per double stroke the volume displaced per double stroke so this is one stroke this is another stroke right so total volume for this is 5. So, 5.2.5 for forward stroke, 2.5 for return stroke. So, totally 2.5 plus 2.5, it is 5 centimeter is the cube, right? So, also the maximum pressure is equal to 350 bar or 350 into 10 to the power of plus 5 Newton per meter square. So, that is the maximum pressure developed, right? So, the length of the, the cylinder displacement or stroke is equal to how much 50 millimeter. So, the stroke, stroke is the movement from this end to this end. So, this is the stroke, right. So, the movement of the piston from one end to another end. So, what we need to find out is the number of double strokes which I designated that as small double stroke. Number of double stroke n is equal to question mark and the maximum load it can tape, take up. So, these are the things tabulated accordingly given, right. Let us find the number of double pumping strokes, number of double strokes, number of double strokes, number of double strokes. We know that we have a general equation where we can relate strokes, volume and uh, other things by the equation number of double stroke is equal to in the numerator cylinder volume for 
cylinder volume for 50 cc or what we call 5 ml. So, 5 ml of fluid displaced. So, what I am I am abbreviating that writing the volume for 50 cc of fluid displaced to the volume displaced for double stroke volume displaced for double so volume so it is comparing volume so 50 cc how much volume for double stroke how much volume right so for 50 cc what i can write is pi d square volume based by 4 into l so pi d square by 4 into l right that is the fold and for double i can directly write that as v double stroke so i will expand pi by 4 and uh, d is 65 into 10 to the power of minus 3 whole square into the length is 50 millimeter. So, 50 into 10 to the power of 3 meter and v double stroke divided by v double stroke is nothing but this one 5 cc or 5 ml. So, I will put it as 5 milliliter. But uh, f uh, one thing here we need to be cautious since it is in ml, since it is 5 ml milli, so you can dispense this 10 to the power of minus 3, you need not directly apply 65, right? 65 square into 50 divided by 5 ml, right? Now it is balanced, right? So after simplifying, you will get 33.8. Eight, number of double strokes is equal to 33.8 or you round this up it is nearly equal to 34. So, 34 strokes. So, number of strokes is equal to 34. right? So, this is the number of double strokes is equal to 34. So, this is got by comparing the volume. Okay? Now, we need to find out the maximum load taken. So, after writing down this, we need to note down the maximum load taken. The maximum load taken, number 2. The maximum load taken by the pump right so how do you calculate the maximum load taken by the pump we know that pressure is equal to force by area so maximum pressure is equal to maximum load by area right so cross multiply you get f maximum is equal to p maximum into area. So, maximum P maximum how much according to the problem the 350 bar. So, you can write 350 into 10 to the power of plus 5 into area. So, area how do we calculate area? Area can be found out by pi d square by 4. So, area is pi d square by 4. Right. So, you can write pi and the diameter is 65 into 10 to the power of minus 3 whole square divided by 4. Right. Pi d square by 4. You can just uh, I will write like this. Right. So, if you write like this, simplify everything, you will get the answer in terms of 
11640 Newton. This is a huge number. So, you just truncate it to 3 decimal place. So, it is kilo Newton that is the maximum force developed inside the system. So, this is a peculiar problem because neither you are applying Pascal law, neither you are applying Bernoulli's law, but from common sense from the first principle you have to find out these parameters. So, in the first case by comparing the volume that is volume for double stroke compared with volume for swept volume right you found out the number of double stroke and for maximum load you just apply pressure is equal to force by area simplify you will get this right. So, this is one such problem if you compare the data you will find that it requires 33 strokes to develop a maximum pressure of maximum force of 116 and with this apply pressure of 350 bar right. So, this is the solution for this problem. So, I will stop.